UFC. Fight Island is legit. It is actually happening. It is going down. And they announced where it is. They released some pictures of it, all that kind of stuff. It is at the United Arab Emirates. It's at Yaz Island. I believe that's how you say it. I didn't hear anybody say it. The Brown Yeti yeah. jumps in. He said, hey. Um, ben said, did you ask your nephew if he knows what capping is? I did not. <laughs> I could have asked him. He probably would have told me. There you go. Josh said, keep up the hard work uh, on Facebook. So we, we, got our, we got our Facebook bunch in here. But, Good. man, I don't know what's going on with this thing. It's just it, it's very frustrating. My app ain't working. My app ain't working. All right, UFC, legit happening. Fight Island is a real thing. It is going down. They are doing UFC 251 there, and they have three title bouts that are going to happen on that pay-per-view July 11th. Kamara Usman against Gilbert Burns because they couldn't get the stuff done with Jorge Masvidal. Up comes the next guy, right? Yep. Not the fight everybody right. wants, but... It, should still be interesting. Burns, of course, knocked out, or didn't knock out, but beat Woodley uh, not that long ago. You know, that's a, that should be a good one. You've got a, a featherweight title rematch between Alex Volkanovsky and Max Holloway. Now, Max Holloway, pretty good name, uh, and he's entertaining as hell to watch. So, that should be fun. And then Peter Yan will take on Jose Aldo for the vacant bantamweight championship. That means Henry Cejudo is officially done. Uh, he ain't coming back. They are going to give the belt to somebody else. This could be interesting. Uh, none of these fights that were announced have any of the major players that we talked about. And that is disappointing, but I think they did a good job with stacking the card to make it something that, one, everybody's going to want to watch to see what Fight Island looks like anyway, right? I, I think mean, so. I'm it's on watch. the beach. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. intrigued now. Um, and then on top of that, you know, they're they're doing... Fight nights as well immediately after. They've got one on the 15th. They've got one on the 18th the week after. And then another one on the 25th. All of those will be at Fight Island. So, obviously, it's it. here we go. Damien said UFC starting to look like WWE having a show in India. Uh, well, look, they've done a fight on Yaz Island before. Like, they've, they've done that. So, this one's just going to be a little different with no crowd. Uh, they have done a ton of stuff globally. They've always been a global company. I mean, the the last fight night that you had before the pandemic stuff was in Brazil. I mean, they, they do fights overseas and in different countries all the time because the actual roster is full of guys that are global. I, I, heard, I heard a podcast today. I don't know when it was filmed or recorded, um, but I listened to a podcast today and a guy talked about how the UFC has done such a better job than any other major sport in America of being global. Oh yes. And they really have like, we're, we're trying to get basketball globalized and we're trying to globalize football a little more and get into other countries and, and baseball, the same thing. None of them have been nearly as successful at drawing in large sums of fans than UFC has. Yeah. No, it's it, it's pretty remarkable how they do it. Um, I, I will tell you this. I think that's where Dana White got his money. When Dana White got paid as much as he got paid to buy the UFC, it, it was because they saw global dollars, not American dollars. Oh, yes. Oh, and that 100%. puts you in a completely different stratosphere. Yeah, it's it's definitely different. That's uh that's the biggest thing. It is a different deal. Um and they I mean they that's partly why they had to make sure that they were able to get this thing up and running. He's done a better job of making sure that they stay running during the pandemic. They yeah. have I mean the best they can. Yes. Yeah. They have kept live sports going and it's remarkable to me, really, uh that they are capable of doing this. I mean, it is it's not common. It's n- nobody else has been able to do this. The NBA isn't coming back until the end of July. You know, really August. Yeah, so I was about to say, yeah, I mean, it's really August. Yeah. So, and this is is different, but the NBA, everybody is. <laughs> Matt said, "Gary, move your mouse down. It's in your eye." Yeah, I had it over here on the on the article. Excuse me. Here, uh, I don't. Go ahead. Go I don't. Ahead. I don't know that it's different, man. I really don't like. Is it more people? Sure it is. 
I think it's a different breed of, and I'm not, this is not calling NBA guys soft. This is not that at all. These guys are professional athletes. They take a beating, they bang their bodies, they put work in. They are freakish athletes. Okay. Not calling them soft at all. It's a different mindset to play basketball and be great at basketball than it is to be a fighter. Okay. Fighter. I assure you these fighters the majority of them did not grow up washing their hands before they ate dinner. Okay. Yeah. And I would bet that 90% of these NBA players, you walk in mama's kitchen, you wash your damn hands. That's just part of it. I've been in those homes. I was raised in one of those homes. I, I, I just, it's just a different way of life. And I, I, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I just, I, I've listened to stories from fighters and they just, they've got grit They've got just a little bit of rust on the side of them that makes them, you know, a little bit dirtier than everybody else and just don't seem to be the germaphobes that that other people could be. I don't know yeah. that you could be a fighter and be a germaphobe. I don't know that that's possible if you yeah. could you could do that. Could you roll around and somebody's sweat dripping in your eyes, in your mouth, yep. bleeding in your face? Yep. I don't I don't know that that's yeah. possible and you're not your your sweat to sweat, your shoulder and your arms and your hands are all over another guy's sweaty ass in basketball, but but their sweat's not getting in your mouth. Okay, it's, I mean I'm it's sure it does not get in your eyes, but and it's just a little different. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I think I, I, you couldn't do it without the fighters. No, and the reason right. the NBA is, is 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 as long as it's been, I fully believe it's because of the players. The players are trying to make sure. That everything they, is safe, et cetera. They want it to be extra safe, and I think these fighters say, huh, a little safe is fine. Well, the, the other side of this is, I mean, UFC has had stuff going on uh, for a good bit now, and they've got guys from all over the globe that yes. are flying in. Play, like, they are able to travel. They are making it happen one way or another. Uh, NBA, MLB, you know, everything else, like, it, obviously, UFC has got money issues right now dealing with some of the biggest stars that they've got on the roster, but they're putting on fights. They're making this stuff happen, and they are coming up with entertaining matchups, and that's the biggest thing, right? You you want to you want to give people something to watch, but you don't want them to watch trash. Like, this no, has it, to be a showcase the, right now. The card, what was it, last weekend, the card that I could care less about. Yeah, 250. You, you shared out a couple of knockouts. I was like, I went back and I rewatched all those fights. Like, like I, that was a card that I could have cared less about. I just, it didn't matter to me. It didn't move the needle to me at all. Still ended up being really exciting and they got my eyes somewhere. Yeah. Because I, mean, I, had to, you, I had to figure out what's going on. When you got guys like Sean O'Malley and you got guys like yeah. uh, Cody Garbrandt, stuff like that. Like, yeah. I mean, you're, you're going to be able to draw some eyeballs with that. So that's the thing. They got to keep, they got to keep entertaining fights going uh, in order to keep people interested in this thing. Like, that's, that's the biggest thing. The other big news that they came up with, they finally have a date for uh, Cormier and Miokic 3. And that's going to be August 15th. It will be on Fight Island. So, finally got that. That means, it, you know, if this one goes, at, whoever wins this is the greatest heavyweight of all time, according to all the media people, right? I don't know that you UFC can say, legend and lord. I don't yes. know that you can say DC would be the greatest heavyweight ever because he wasn't always a heavyweight. Like he he moved up in class to fight Stipe and then beat him and then lost to him and now if he beats him again, yeah, because Stipe I think a lot of people claim that he's probably the best heavyweight of all time. I I think but, so. I'm a little biased in that, but I I think so. Yeah. So I, I think you know we'll we'll see what happens, but uh, but yeah, the the most recent fight on Yaz Island, by the way, was uh, back in September. It was Nurmagomedov, you know, Habib and Dustin Poirier. So uh, they've had big fights before. They will continue to have big fights here. We'll see what happens. Obviously, we want you know some of these bigger names, but tossing in uh, DC and uh, and Stipe for August, I'm I'm in, I'm in. So. UFC will have had like eight or nine events by the time the NBA comes back. That just blows my mind. Blows my mind. All right. Let's dump, uh, let's jump off of that one. Da, 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 da. And let's dive into.